So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody, those of this uh, different time zone. Uh, I'm Jaehyun Park from uh, Seoul National University, South Korea. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, this nice workshop today. Uh, the title today is uh, Towards Compliant and Precise Control of Leg Robots for Walking. So this is a picture from uh, the homepage of this workshop. And I noticed that the four leg robots are much more popular than two leg robots. Uh, but I am going to talk about two leg robots today. So I think one of the main difference could be the feet compared to the four leg robot. So uh, not all the two leg robots have the feet, but uh, many of them have. So if they have uh, the leg, uh, has to become much more complicated because of a more degree of freedom. And because of that, it can become, it uh, easily become heavier. And if it does, then uh, the ankle has to support much larger load uh, compared to uh, without the feet. So this uh, heavy leg robot and compliant or weak ankle uh, make it very difficult to design the hardware and uh, uh, the controller. So this feed uh, is quite needed for like walking a little bit more stably, or sometimes to have nice whole body manipulation or motion, just like in the video of Toyota uh, Human Robot. So today I would like to talk about uh, compliant and precise control of a uh, leg robot. So compliant motion control is really necessary for a uh, humanoid robot or two leg robot because of the walking. So especially with a uh, heavy or heavy robot, uh, we really need to comply at landing so that it does not lose balance. And for typically uh, using human uh, uh, position control robot, compliant behavior is created using external or force stop sensors, uh, most likely. However, uh, in our uh, lab, what we have tried was to use disturbance estimation to create this uh, Compliant, compliant behavior. So this is uh, uh, the approach that I want to introduce today. And another approach uh, is a torque control approach. So uh, this is another uh, direction that in our lab, uh, we are trying to implement uh, uh, compliant motion control. Uh, however, uh, if we do that, uh, many times it was very difficult to create a precise motion control. So uh, we have tried many different things. And today I would like to show uh, some of them. So starting with the position control robot uh, to create a, a compliant motion, most likely we will uh, attach force torque sensors on the limbs that uh, are interacting with the environment and uh, create uh, position uh, control commands to the robot. However, uh, when we participated in uh, DRC finals uh, in 2015, which is already like five to six years ago, uh, we had to uh, create various uh, com uh, whole body motion interacting with the environment at various uh, parts of the body. However, at the time, we could not afford to attach uh, many force torque sensors on the whole body. So instead, what we have tried was to utilize some intrinsic compliance of the robot. So joint itself was a little bit uh, compliant at the time of the robot, and also we a little bit lowered joint control gains so that we can have some compliant motion. At the end, we were successfully uh, creating all this uh, uh, whole body motion and finished some of the missions successfully. So in inspired by this experience, we thought that we can do a research some in, in this direction. So basically uh, another uh, uh, approach that we have tried is that uh, utilizing disturbance of observer. So typically this, this disturbance observer called DOB is used to actually cancel out disturbance to control precise motion. However, in our lab, what we have tried is that we put the uh, upper design, basically we uh, created a positive feedback of estimated uh, disturbance so that we can create compliance. So we estimate disturbance and then we are moving the joint in the same direction as the disturbance. And this was quite effective, uh, especially for walking. 
So you can see in this example uh, that when we uh, when the robot walks, uh, if you look at the feet, the feet uh, collides with obstacle, or sometimes feet is landing much earlier because of the, uh, the disturbance on the upper body. And in all these cases, even without force torque sensors, uh, it was quite stable. And this robot was about uh, 40 kilograms and 140 uh, centimeter. So it was a little bit a lightweight, uh, small robot, humanoid robot. So we wanted to try this algorithm to a different uh, robot to verify if this algorithm is really okay or not. So uh, we have been building uh, another humanoid robot, torque control robot called Tokabi. Uh, in Korean is Tokebi. So we implemented, we wanted to implement the same algorithm on this robot. So we first uh, implemented a joint position controller with PD control uh, controller and simply, and then uh, we implemented the same thing, except that we removed LQR uh, controller. So LQR controller uh, before was used to suppress vibration, but when we implemented on this robot, uh, without it, it was working fine. So uh, why do we include it if it is working without it? So we wanted to uh, simplify it further. So uh, without LQR and the, exactly the same algorithm was implemented on this robot. And this is really a recent uh, try about a month ago. Uh, the robot was uh, possible to walk around without that much of a problem. And even stepping on unknown object was uh, fine. So we thought that uh, this direction could be uh, one possibility or a feasible direction to go on further. And another interesting project that uh, we uh, had conducted recently is to detect collision for a collaborative robot. So to create a, a collision detection algorithm, the very first uh, one we have tried was Momentum Observer. So Momentum Observer was implemented and then we tried to detect collision and it was uh, okay, but it was not really sensitive uh, really compared to the joint torque sensors. And the reason was that uh, moment observer is uh, estimating not only the external torque, but also uncertainty torques, which comes from the modeling errors, including friction. So we really wanted to remove this uncertainty torque to make it sensitive. However, to do that, we really needed to have very precise model of the robot. So uh, instead of uh, creating much more precise model of the robot, we tried to uh, apply some deep learning technology. So in free space, we are running this momentum observer. And then while we do that, uh, we use LSTM to learn this uncertainty torque. In free space motion, there's no external torque. So it was successfully uh, learning this uh, uncertainty torque. And actually when we run everything together, especially for collision, we run both uh, momentum observer algorithm and LSTM so that we can take the difference and that can be estimated as like external torque. And this was uh, uh, quite successful, although it's very preliminary result that you can see here in the video that uh, even at low speed or high speed, we could estimate the uh, external torque quite well. So the collision was really uh, uh, estimated very well. Uh, also, if you look at the graph on the right, you can see that the graph is very, very comparable to the joint torque sensor, which is considered to be ground truth, truth in our case. So uh, we think that this is another algorithm that we can apply. And later we wanted to apply this algorithm to the two-legged robot so that we can have uh, uh, quite a compliant motion control as the, the DOB was implemented. Another direction that we uh, are uh, focusing on is the implementation of whole body control on the torque control robot. And especially it is based upon the operation space control framework. Uh, if we use torque control robot and operation space control framework together, what we are doing is a little bit different from the operation control robot. So if we have a task a level uh, desired behavior, then we create or we uh, design the desired force at the task level or operation space. 
and then we convert them into the torque directly and then command the torque to the robot uh, instead of the joint angles. And in this way, uh, we could uh, accomplish kind of intrinsic uh, compliant behavior. And these demonstrations were possible uh, without, again, force torque sensors, which is not really like necessary, but this is an, a demonstration that we can do it without force torque sensors. So unknown, uh, stepping on a known object or interactive walking as human was possible. However, uh, uh, we have suffered still to create a precise motion control. So we have uh, speculated many uh, possibilities uh, for the reasons. So joint compliance, communication delay, state transmission, and there, there could be many reasons. And recently we are suspecting more about the joint com compliance weak ankle, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning of the talk. So uh, we decided to model this, include uh, this joint compliance in the model. So typically, if we are uh, modeling the robot in the operation space controller, we ignore the joint compliance, which is quite stiff actually. So we uh, typically ignore it and uh, consider the robot as rigid by dynamics. However, what we have decided is that uh, we include this joint compliance. And uh, when we formulate the joint operation space control framework, we use the only uh, more inertia dynamics to compute the lambda matrix, which is the task space inertia matrix. And the link side information or inertia matrices were used for feed forward manner. And this is because we are actually controlling the encoder at the motor. So uh, we, we, we thought that this is much more natural way to control more precisely the motor. And this was quite successful, although I'm not sure if you can uh, watch, I mean, the, recognize the difference between these two. Uh, the control performance was much improved, especially for actually main player, but also at uh, this floating base to leg work too. Another uh, approach we have uh, recently uh, tried is to account for actual bandwidth. So uh, if we are using joint space control, so what we do is we given a task space trajectory, we convert into desired uh, joint angles and then control each joint to track these joint angles very precisely. And we are uh, trying to use maximum capabilities of each joint actuators. However, if we are controlling uh, the robot with the uh, operation space control, uh, what we do is we create the desired force at the task and then convert into the, the torque directly. And if you do that, uh, if we have any limitation in one of the torques, one of the joints, then that can uh, reduce a lot of performance in the task space. That means we cannot increase the gain in the task space because of the sum of the joint. So this is the, we, uh, thought that this could be the problem. So uh, to solve this problem, what we have tried was to have steps. So at the very first step, we are utilizing all the torques to create desired force. In the second level, we ex exclude some of the uh, joints to create the operation space force. And then the third level, we do further. So having these steps, at the end, we will utilize the most uh, uh, high bandwidth actuators only to create the uh, uh, end effector uh, force or task space force. That's how we can reduce the motion control uh, error uh, using the same uh, control framework. And this was quite uh, successful, uh, although this is again a preliminary result on the manipulator. So you can see in this video, the video is a bit blurry sometimes. But uh, compared to the operation space uh, original framework, the errors were significantly reduced. And even compared to the joint space controller, the result was uh, quite comparable. So now we are very happy about this result. So combining maybe or only one of them is uh, accounting for joint compliance or accounting for uh, joint control bandwidth, we can uh, try to uh, uh, improve the position, uh, position uh, control performance of the torque control robot, of humanoid robot, 
uh, even further in the near future. So this is uh, one thing that we want to uh, try uh, soon, sooner or later. So today uh, I have introduced two uh, approaches, creating compliant behavior for position control robot and more precise control for the torque control robot. So uh, we, I have introduced two different uh, of the robots, but uh, I think uh, that we really need these two features, compliant and also precise control of the leg, leg robot. That's why uh, in our lab, we are using two humanoid Two different humanoid robots and uh, creating, trying to create uh, these uh, two uh, important behaviors. Now uh, we are using this uh, DOKB to employ in the real world scenarios. So there is going to be an uh, Avatar X Prize competition in this uh, fall. So we are participating in this uh, competition as a team SNU. So you can see in the middle, this is me controlling the humanoid behind. So at, in this uh, uh, video on the left, we are controlling on the upper body and on the right, you can see that we have an interface with the pedal that we can also control the walking uh, naturally. So I think that through this kind of interface, uh, we can use this humanoid robot uh, in the real world scenarios uh, much more uh, in a recent uh, time. So thank you very much. So this is the group members and my lab. Thank you. Thank you very much, Che Hung. Uh, that was a great talk. Uh, is there anyone who has questions for Che Hung? If you want, you can uh, type your um, questions in the in the chat, uh, or you can raise your hand so that uh, you can come out on mute. I'm sorry, I spent too much time. <laughs> when I practiced, it was uh, 15, 16 minutes, but somehow when it's live, it takes longer. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, while the others ask questions, I, I, I have one question. Um, uh, how, how much of an effect does the actuators that you use have um, on the controllers that you use? Do, do you use custom uh, actuators on your humanoid robots or are they uh, off the shelf actuators? Yes, yes. So uh, for the, the humanoid robot, the first humanoid position control humanoid robot, we use the Dynamic Cell Pro from the company Robotis, which is quite popular actuator as a modular actuator. So it has motor, gear, and driver combined as one uh, to get together. And in the second uh, robot, the uh, Tokebi, we are using Colmo game motor and Elmo driver and harmonic drive. So these are off the shelf uh, actuators. And as I mentioned, they are very different, although but the algorithms were fine for both. So we are happy about that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions from the audience? I see one hand raised. Uh, Christoph, did, did you have a question? Yes, I have one. Uh, so thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, and just a quick question, as you started your presentation, why do you think that the feet are not that widespread in four-legged robots? Oh, yeah. I think uh, without it is fine. <laughs> I think that's the, the main thing. So as I mentioned, if we have feet, then there are many problems because we will have like a heavier leg and it's much more complicated in terms of hardware. So if we don't have it, then I think it's much, much more nice. And because of that, the legs are lighter and the dynamics of the whole robot is much simpler. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.